Um, thank you so much for inviting me here today to Budapest, to all the organisers. It's uh, truly a privilege. I cannot tell you, uh, since 2005 when I stepped off the plane in Mumbai, I've been back here probably about 12, maybe 13 times. It is truly one of my favourite parts of the world and uh, it's a real honour and a personal pleasure to be here. Um, I've been asked today to talk about um, the new horizons of hybrid learning. To give you my background very quickly, um, I started making movies when I was 10 years old. I never in a million years thought it would become a career. It led me to work in Hollywood. I've written TV shows, movies. I then moved into a uh, academia. Uh, I ran Bond University, the largest private university in Australia. I, run the, I ran their film program for about four years. I then worked for New York Film Academy as the president of International. I set up four campuses around the world from scratch. I've worked, I lived in Abu Dhabi for four years, uh, Paris, uh, I set up two campuses in Sydney, and now I serve as the executive chairman across uh, two film schools, uh, a film school, an acting school, and um, I'm also still a film producer. What I'm really excited about is the direction that we're going to be teaching people in the future. Nothing gives me greater joy than to actually see somebody who is successful at what they want to do, and primarily in my area, it's making movies. So the first thing I want to start with here is we all know this picture. For about the last, let's say, 100, 150 years, this is the way we have been teaching. Uh, we have a wonderful teacher at the front of the classroom, they have knowledge, they impart that knowledge and hopefully ask their students to think deeply and come up with new ideas. And it's worked. And I think the one thing that it's worked is because there's a personal relationship between the student and the teacher. And this is pretty much the same whether it's higher education or um, uh, high school or primary school. A few years ago, we realised wouldn't it be great if we could educate students and we could do that through computers in the classroom? The reason I use this picture is it's incredibly valuable and valid. The problem what's missing here is actually the personal. And I think the one thing that we're finding with online programs, I heard a statistic that I was at a congress not long ago said, um, the statistics are about 6% of people are finishing online programs. Coursera, Unity, we were talking about today, 98% of people don't finish the program. And part of the reason is, I believe, that you sit in a room by yourself and look at a screen, there's no social interaction. You don't have somebody to answer your question and you uh, effectively become bored. So what was the next stage? Well, this is what we're working on now, is the hybrid learning model. About 20 years ago, I went and listened to a gentleman called Robert Kiyosaki, who's a financial strategist, and he said in the future, <coughs> the best teachers will be broadcast on television. Uh, most of the people in the room laughed. That's exactly what we're going to be doing now, and we are doing. Uh, MUNI, that's exactly what we'll be doing, and Bupesh, I believe, will talk about that in depth. But we can take lecturers from anywhere in the world, teachers who are specialists to what they do, and broadcast them anywhere in the world. Now, I have a studio in Sydney. Uh, it's probably one of the best studios next to Fox Studios. We have fiber optic in the building. We can broadcast out at 200 megabytes a second upload. I've partnered with Amazon, uh, so we can use their web servers. We can broadcast anywhere in the world. Now, your institutions can do exactly the same thing. We're all used to Skype, Zoom, um, a whole range of those kind of programs. The trick is how do you keep it personal? And one of the things we found is if you have a group of people who are learning from somebody from across the world, they can actually have the interaction and the direct response that you had in that original slide. I think this type of hybrid blended learning is going to be incredibly valuable. Now, I could have actually done this lecture from Sydney. 
There's really no reason for me to be here, <laughs> except I really love Indian food. And I begged Bupesh, could I come? <laughs> In the future, that's exactly what, um, we're already doing it, but what is, my job here today is, what are some of the things that are going to be very exciting coming along? Well, uh, personal projects and also professional that I'm involved with, let me explain possibly what the next 10, 15, 20 years might look like in education. And uh, I think it's quite exciting. If you want to see where things are headed, I come from the film industry, look at culture, watch movies. Because movies have such an incredibly powerful effect on society that what happens is what is fun can actually become serious. So remember Star Trek back in the 1960s, right? Who would have ever thought we would be able to communicate the way that Captain Kirk does? Well, I'm carrying two of those communicators on me right now. Everyone's got a cell phone. It's no big deal now. So I love to play with video games. And I want to start with showing you a very quick clip of what kids are playing with today. And I think you just have you. There we go. Cards to the right of the home screen are from the past, 
for example, messages, videos, or photos. Tap on a photo to share it and choose one of your friends. Swipe down to go back to standby and have fun exploring. Now this will keep being developed. The interesting thing is you can see there the size of the glasses. So, remember that classroom where we had a bunch of students putting their hand up and one lecturer at front? So the next stage now is the PlayStation has brought out HoloLens. HoloLens, I'll show you in a moment what it actually does, but all of these students now effectively are learning in a hybrid model. The thing you, I think we have to really remember is how does it remain personal? The minute we get technological, people tend to put these things down. I have developed a lot of virtual reality and augmented reality. I have a 15-year-old daughter. She brings her friends over and I say, hey, you guys want to see something really cool? And I get them to put it on. It generally lasts about three minutes and they want to go and do something else. And the reason is, is because they're closed off in a certain area. So now uh, Microsoft is uh, working on HoloLens and we'll have a look at what the classrooms now, another element of the way that we actually deliver hybrid learning. For most of the computing age, software has been tracked behind the glass of a monitor. Microsoft HoloLens frees your content into the real world with holograms. These holograms are a part of your world. They stay in place as you walk around them and view them from all angles. As a developer, you can make their size and shape consistent with real world objects. If a hologram is in front of a real world object, it occludes that object. If it's behind, the hologram is included. If you leave a room and come back, they can still be there when you return or you can have them follow you into another room. As a developer, you can also have your holograms interact with you through gaze, gesture, and voice. Anything you create can know where you are and can be made to look at you. Holograms can communicate directly with you. Finally, holograms are made of light and sound. Developers can make them respond to the brightness in the room or cast a shadow. HoloLens supports 3D spatial sound so sounds seem like they're coming directly from the hologram, even if it's out of sight. Your imagination can go beyond the screen. Now with Microsoft HoloLens, your software can too. So, for a lot of kids, if there were probably 11 year olds sitting in this room, they go, big deal. They're already using these kind of techniques, they're already playing with these things, they're playing with augmented reality. Here's what I'd like you to remember, if we had a congress like this five, ten years from now, maybe even sooner, sorry, maybe even sooner, um, there might be half the room who are physically here and the other half from all over the world sitting in the holographic area. <coughs> you would still have the social interaction with those people. So as much as we're exchanging business cards out in the foyer and having lovely conversations and meeting, get your head around the idea that you would actually be talking to people who are in Sydney, New York, London, who would then shoot the business card to your app and you would still have that conversation. Um, I just want to remember, remember Star Trek? <laughs> and the phones, this is already being done. Now what's the problem with the, uh, the HoloLens? Again, it's the size, it's not comfortable. It's too big, but it's in a huge step forward. In five or 10 years, they'll bring that down. So the next thing, so if you've got a class that's personal, we're now moving into holograms and the way that we interact and what we can do with those, what would be ideal? Well, back to Star Trek, if any of you are complete Star Trek fans, there used to be a thing called the holodeck on the Enterprise. And what would happen on the holodeck is you'd walk in a room, it would be empty, and it would create anything for you in 3D. And it would surround you. This already exists. One of the companies I'm associated with in Australia actually have produced this. It's called a holographic room. 
If you want one for your school, they're probably about $100,000. And your students can actually stand on the moon and walk around the moon. They can have star fields around them, like in Iron Man, when he has everything appear in front of him. Um, there's so many applications for this room, it's quite extraordinary. So what I did one night is I took my wife, my kids, and their friends down to play with this. And I got them to go through the Starfield area. You have planets that surround you. Like physically, you've got glasses like this, and the planets are around you. And if Mars is here, you can stick your head inside Mars and see what the magma looks like. And what I did is I ran from room to room watching everybody playing. Here's the really cool thing about this. You can have four or five people standing in the room all seeing the same thing from different perspectives. It's social. It's no longer I've got a pair of glasses like this and I can have five students working together. So let me show you what it does. Why not visit the moon? Hollowverse has the world's first holographic planetarium, and it's opened on the Gold Coast. It uses some of the world's most advanced holographic technology to show you the solar system. The holograms are made of light, and they float all around you. You can even go down to the surface of the planets and see them with your own eyes. The artificial gravity will make it so when you jump, you feel like you're on the moon. Holoverse, the world's first hologram entertainment center. There's a very big discount for those who book today. Go to www.holoverse.com.au for more details. Now, it, it really doesn't do justice. When I go to ho the Holoverse, again, we started in the entertainment realm, we take it into the educational. You stand there in water and it's floating around you and there are fish swimming around you you can actually duck down and go under the water and let the fish swim to you. Um, and let, let's imagine that that's like 8-bit video game characters. You give that 5 or 10 years in the algorithms we have, we actually have an ability to walk through the Sistine Chapel and stand in the room and look around the whole area. So these are the tools that educators are going to be using over the next how many years? the more development, but it really, I think the one thing that has to come through is it's all personal. Um, there is one thing I'd like to show you before we get to the end, and uh, just bear with me. Can I, can I send, can I broadcast to you? Here we go, let me just see if I can start, start now, see if I can get my phone up here on the screen. Have I got that still? Um, what I'm doing here, and there's just two more things I want to share with you. If we have more time, I will broadcast this to every single one of your phones. I'll show you what it looks like from mine. If you want to take your students on an excursion in the classroom, and you don't want to buy a hollow deck or any of those, you know, those things, right now, is the ability to take them to the Sistine Chapel and have them look around and explore right through their phones. It's really quite simple. I think if we get it up on the screen, and as they say, this is really cool. This hopefully will knock your socks off. And any of you can do this when you go home and show your uh, family. Tell you what, what Oh wait, you guys work on that and I'll just show you this, this bit and then we'll, we'll use that as the, uh, the end. So, what is it going to look like in the future? Well, Dell, have we, have we got it? Sorry, we can? Okay, great, thank you. If you can put that up on screen.
what I'm going to do is broadcast my phone just up to the screen so you can see what uh, what you can do. No. Okay, we'll fix that. Okay, so what I want to do is show you what Dell's working on, and you will be uh, probably getting some of this. Not science fiction. This is fact. Oops. Sorry, folks. Can you um, can you just roll that video for me while we're waiting? Thank you. For over 30 years, technology and higher education have gone hand in hand. Universities and other institutions of higher learning have been aggressive adopters of new technology, leveraging the educational opportunities that computers, specialized software, and other IT equipment can enable. As a result, the classrooms of tomorrow will utilize mobility, cloud, and big data technology to accelerate student outcomes. Advances in cloud technology will allow communication and class participation on a global scale. Imagine a teacher in Beijing being able to lecture and interact with a classroom halfway around the world. Thanks to sophisticated learning management systems, students will be able to access that lecture remotely along with all of their other important course materials anywhere, anytime, and from virtually any device. Universities today are just beginning to rely on predictive analytics to increase retention and provide a more personalized learning experience. In the near future, teachers will also rely on personal data with predictive modeling to monitor each student's engagement in the classroom. As we see the proliferation of devices across campuses, we will also see the need for innovative security measures. These systems will protect sensitive information while allowing unrestricted communication and transfer of data. These are just a few examples of how the technology of today is helping us transform the world of tomorrow. So I like that video because we talked about Google Glass. You saw students sitting there with basically a Google Glass. You've got a hologram of a lecturer from Beijing that's going to be in the classroom. Oh, you can? Great. Um, all those elements come together. And right now, here we go. Thank you, gentlemen. If I wanted to, if I wanted to show you, okay, have a look at this. This is a video. So it's a recorded video. So I decided, I'm going to have a look around. Oh, look at that building. I'm going to go back and have a look at this till have a look up at the sky. So I'm looking, if you see my phone, I'm turning around on a 360 video looking at all the elements. So the more of these that come online, I don't need to stand there with the goggles on, I can do it straight from my phone. And we can do it. That is not hard to do. If I just go back to the slide. So if you want to look for those, there's plenty on YouTube now. Um, how it's done is a little uh, more complex, but it works. And just go to the next slide. You could, thank you. The one thing I'd like to say is there's a whole bunch of really cool toys. Kids are playing with these now. I have a, a friend of mine who has a two-year-old, or maybe a little bit younger, walked up to their 75-inch television screen the other day. And you know what this kid did? She didn't get that it doesn't scroll <laughs> because she's using iPads from literally day one. So the one thing that is a takeaway from this, there's a lot of technology that's being developed. There's technology that's accessible. It's not super expensive. But the one thing I think that you really have to remember, and they said it in the Dell uh, piece, keep it personal. If it's not personal, it will not last. Education is always about growth between people and awareness in a person, and they love to do it with other people. So good luck, and um, thank you again for having me here today.